Hello players, so I unboxed the Corsair Spec Omega RGB case a couple of weeks ago. Now we've got a full system inside and we can run through how easy it was to get that system inside. Okay, so when I first started building in here, everything was going well and then I realized quite quickly that I didn't have as much space as I'd like. That might be because my components are big components. There's a full size ATX motherboard and a 280 millimeter radiator in there and plus a bunch of extra peripheral stuff so that means a lot of extra cables. I found the back of the case and the basement were quite tight for space especially when trying to route cables and things like that. Not only because there's a lot of cables to manage and it's quite a thin case but because Corsair's uh, little control boxes in there also take up quite a bit of space as well. Now I've got four SSDs in this machine because I like my games to load fast and there is space in the back there's a rack for three ssds and two three and a half inch drive bays for normal hard drives i ended up buying the commander pro rgb and fan controller hub thing and i'll get to that in a minute but that ended up taking up one of my three and a half inch drive bays because i have nowhere else to put it and the two and a half inch drive bays that are on the back of the machine kind of get in the way of cable management so if they weren't there they would take up space but then i wouldn't have any room for my ssds I managed to get my 280mm seated in the front just about in push-pull configuration, but that was a tight squeeze. And whilst we're talking about fans, you will have to buy some more fans because this case does get very hot. As you can see at the front, there is not a lot of room, a bit dusty there, there is not a lot of room for a front intake. Now, of course, Sarah said, okay, there is enough space, but I found that not to be the case because the area just above the GPU got red hot. So hot in fact that I actually nearly burnt the back of my hand touching the front glass. So what I've done to counteract that is use the Commander Pro and its fan controller speeds to kind of counteract that in an unconventional way. Fans at the front of the radiator are tied to the CPU and they increase in speed as the CPU gets hotter and the fans on the inside are tied to the GPU heat so when that gets hotter they speed up and hopefully will move a lot of air over the GPU and out the exhaust. And talking of exhaust, I bought two more HD140 fans for the top of the case to help exhaust some of the heat out there as well. So putting a radiator on top of the case is pretty much impossible unless you have a super tiny thin radiator. And it's not possible anyway because there's actually no cutouts for the pipes to go down. And if you're thinking, oh, I'll just put the fans on top and the radiator underneath. Well, unless you have super thin fans, they're not going to fit either, unfortunately. So what I've got in the top is nothing and the fans are actually screwed in underneath just for the exhaust on the top. Another drawback is that there is no hinge on this glass panel. There's four hex screws that you have to undo every time to take the front panel off. Now that's not really much a problem if you set up your machine and leave it for a couple of years, say, but if you're constantly switching out components, that's going to get really old really fast. Now I mentioned that I bought the Corsair Commander Pro lighting module thing earlier, and that's because I bought a bunch more fans, two for the front, two for the top, or two for the front and one for the top. I bought some more fans anyway, and I couldn't connect all of them to the onboard fan controllers and RGB controllers, which is a shame. Another thing to point out is that this doesn't come with a separate fan controller. All the fan control speeds are done on the motherboard, so you have to make sure that your motherboard has enough fan headers for your fans, or bite the bullet and buy the Corsair Commander Pro like I did. Now, Initially, I did grip my teeth thinking, oh, do I really have to buy this? But it turns out it's for the best. It is an amazing piece of kit, and I may actually do a separate video on that later. It allows you to adjust up to six individual fans and allows you to adjust all their speeds individually and tie them to whichever heat source that you want. It even comes with a little heat probe so that you can dot around your case and use them as heat indicators for when to adjust the fan speeds. Since the Commander Pro can only control six fans and I have seven in this case, what you can do is cheat and buy fan header splitters which is what I did and that allows you to plug two fans into one fan header slot and the best use case for that is for radiator fans because ideally you want two of them spinning at the same time so it doesn't matter that you're only using one header to control both of them. So including all of those drawbacks is this case worth it and that is entirely your decision. For me, I am very happy with this case, even though it was a bit of a pain in the backside to build in, and I couldn't have my components exactly where I wanted them. The NZXT 
logo on the CPU cooler is upside down, which is driving me a bit mental. But I can live with that because of the aesthetics of this case. It's absolutely beautiful. And the customization with the RGB is out of this world with Corsair's IQ software. And we'll go through some lighting profiles and things like that in just a few seconds. But a quick word of warning, this rainbow effect that you see right here is the default effect. And that default effect applies on startup and when the machine is locked. No matter what profile you have it set to, even if all the RGBs are off, if you lock your machine or restart it, boom, unicorn vomit. So I went onto the Corsair forums and started making some noise about it. And some other people have already started making noise about it, which is good news. Corsair have said that they are working on making hardware profiles for all of their RGB products, including this case and all the fans, which means that hopefully soon, soon you'll be able to save whichever hardware, whichever lighting profile you have to the hardware. And that will be the default profile when it starts up and shuts down and goes into lock. So let's dim the lights and see what we can do in this software. Okay, so this is the Corsair IQ software. As you can see, I've got a few profiles over here. The current one is the rainbow profile. So we can choose either the Corsair Spec Omega or the Commander Pro. And the Commander Pro can adjust things like the fan speeds and adjust them on all of these various parameters and adjust the fan curves for each single parameter or and every single fan in the system there. Currently I've got it running quiet while I'm doing just while I'm doing this demonstration so we don't have any horrible background fan noise. Okay, so if we go to spec omega RGB, there it is, and we have light in channel one and we have light in channel two. Light in channel two is all the fans and light in channel one is the front RGB strip. So if we get rid of this horrible unicorn vomit there, we have all these LEDs which we can address individually. So if we press plus to add a new item, it always defaults to rainbow way for some reason, but here you can adjust the speed, slow or fast. And what you can do is select individual LEDs. So let's say we want these four, bottom four, or is that the top four? I'm not sure. So let's have a look. That is the bottom four just doing the rainbow effect there. And we'll, we can add a new layer. And again, defaults to rainbow wave, but let's have something, uh, not rain, we'll go for strobing. So you can see the strobing layer is above the rainbow wave layer. So if we speed that up to fast, you can see the strobing, we'll alternate it between, uh, let's have white and there we go, white and yellow. This is gonna be the worst. This is gonna be the worst profile ever. Okay, so we have strobing above rainbow. So you can see the, the, the strobing is going above. If we drag that down below it, the rainbow will always stay on top. These four that we selected here and the rest of it will be strobing. Now we can select just the LEDs that we want to strobe. So let's have the next three LEDs strobing like that. So we've got white, off, yellow, off. Okay, and we'll add a new layer, which puts it to the top by default. And we can have, what should we go for? Color warp. Now we'll do something, so we've got gradient. Okay, so this these top four, these, however many are left here can be gradient. So we can set, add a new point. We'll add this point here, that'll be red. And we'll add a new point, well, new point's red. So what we have here is a one second transition from white to red. Now we can up this by, say we want that to last five seconds. and now a transition from white to red, and that will take five seconds to achieve that. So we go white, red, and then it goes back to white. Now, if you wanted it to go back to white without a jump, we'd add another point in here. That point would be the red one, and then the end point again would be the white one. And up in here is the brightness adjust as well. So 
we'd want that to be the same if we'd want it to go from a fairly dull white to a very bright red and then back to white again. As you can see in between the sequence there's a little blip and that little blip is because I haven't dragged this all the way to the front. So if I drag that all the way to the front you will see now that it's nice and smooth. And here you can see the three flashing LED alternating LEDs that we have here. What we can do is take this and put it across all of them. So what will happen now is that if we change this white to say a green We'll have them both green. So all the effects are layered and you'll see that the, when the alternating effect is off, it goes to the layer behind it, which is this gradient or the layer in front of it, should I say. Let's grab those and start a new one and do one that's easier to see. So we'll add a new layer. What we'll do is we'll have this as a static color. So this is gonna be our background layer and it's gonna be blue. And then we are going to add another layer on top of that. And we're gonna have rain. So we are going to have white rain, which kind of does like a rainfall effect, I'm guessing. So the rain color is white and the first layer is blue. So you can see here that the white actually goes on top of the blue. And then you can get really stupid and spend hours making something that does this. So if we were to switch these layers and put the static color on top of the rain, rain's underneath and we can't see it because it's blocked by the static color. However, if we select only this many LEDs for the static color and this many, that static color will block because it's on top the rain on those side LEDs and it will still allow the rain to happen in the middle. Now you can layer up as many layers as you want and get really creative and crazy with the different layers it's pretty much Photoshop for LEDs. Every single LED is, individu is individually addressable, so I can have these. Uh, let's delete all the stuff I did there. So we'll go rainbow, so I can have these two doing a rainbow, and that one, and that one, and that one. Just for the hell of it. So you can really get creative with this, especially with the effects. So there's color shift, which just shifts between two colors. Color pulse, let's put it across them. So similar to the rainbow effect, but slightly different. Color wave. Strobing, sequential, Night Rider. There we go. Michael, if you set both alternating colors to the same color, you only have one color. So you can set the visor to go across, you set the out effect to go across just those ones or the whole lot. Marquee. So you can set LEDs to go off against temperature heat packages from any part of your hardware. And some of the interesting ones are things like solid. So now this doesn't sound that interesting, but what you can do is set up these four to go red for, so let's have a 10 second, so let's have a 10 second effect. So we can set these, this red, these four red ones to go red for, two seconds and then after that we'll add another thing and we can have a break and then make it go brighter and then we can have this and then make it go dull again and then we can make it go brighter again and then we can have another one okay let's do that across the whole 
the whole thing so you can see what's going on there. So we've got it going about halfway point and then we have it going off and then we have bright and then you can change these colors to any colors. So you can really get in deep and create whichever effects that you want to do. There's absolutely no limit to the amount of effects you can create with this. Especially using something like this as a base layer and then adding on uh, perhaps another effect. Ripple I haven't played around that much with. But again, you can adjust the brightness and distance and all manner of things over time. So you can have as many different points as you want. Now this is just a one second effect, but you can you can have this go for as long as you like, I believe. Okay, 99 seconds appears to be the longest you can set this for. So I've just set the Knight Rider effect to a white background, a dim white background. I could have that bright if I wanted to, but we're gonna have that fairly dim. And then we can go on to Lighting Channel 2. So these are the fans and each, so we can add a new thing, and each fan LED is also individually addressable. And you can have things, so we can have the visor effect across this fan or, or across all the fans. So these kind of effects will go in sequence across all of the fans and we can just add another layer if we want and we can have just this one with a white background and then we can add another layer. So we can have this one with the top half blue. So then we can set the second one to the top half blue, add another layer and have the bottom half with this rain effect. And if we put the visor on top, that visor effect will go across on top of all the other fans. Now this last column is called Lighting Link, and this will sync the effect across the front RGB panel and all the fans at once. So you set one effect and it will go across all of them. So we'll have, we have visor, alternate in green, and we'll do another green. We'll do that. We'll set that to fast and delete these. But you can see that the lighting link has appeared on the second channel now. So the lighting link will go across all of them. So we have the lighting link on the front panel. So you will see that the effect happens on the front panel and then passes that effect over onto the fans. So with a little bit of time in the software, you can really customize the lighting until your heart is content. Well, thanks for watching guys. Links for everything that I mentioned are in the video description below and until next time, keep playing.